Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy? Sports and Fitness Rants. I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Got another great video for you guys today, as usual. You guys know the deal on this channel. We must continue to set the record straight. Stop the lies. Stop the narratives. Stop them from rewriting history. And hold these guys to a standard. Hold them accountable, man. Call these guys out. You guys know on this channel, man, what it's about. It's about the facts. And we're going to talk about LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers, man. They got eliminated last night. I didn't watch the game. It was on late. Uh, I woke up in the morning and I saw the score. And like I told you guys, it, I told you it wasn't about them getting swept or not getting swept or the wins and the losses per se. I didn't think they were going to beat the Denver Nuggets. Really, no one really thought they would beat the Denver Nuggets. But it's about the way that LeBron James continues to carry himself on the basketball court. And this man continues to make excuses in the post-game press conference. We're going to talk about this video, guys. Because like I can tell you, he's a laughing stock, man. The guy's a complete, he's a clown, man. I don't know the way to, I can't curse on this channel. I won't do it. But, you know, and I want to thank you guys, man. Everyone across the world, everyone across the states has been supporting my channel, man. Once again, guys, I'm truly humbled, man. For real, man. Shout out to my man, Stefan, over in Bulgaria that sent me that fan art. The dude's got some skills with the designing. Let me know, guys. I, I was thinking about making some sports and fitness rants t-shirts. Uh, you know, we'll see. Man, I told you, I'm not really here for the money or sell things or things like that. But you guys have been asking me about some of this stuff. So maybe I'll think about doing some t-shirts. Let me know, guys. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, like I said, man, shout out to the Denver Nuggets, man, for moving on to the next round. Uh, and they continue their title defense, man. Shout out to them, man. And these videos that we do about LeBron James and the Lakers and the losing, it has nothing, nothing to take away from the Denver Nuggets and their success. I didn't think that the Lakers were going to beat the Denver Nuggets anyway. Now, what I've told you guys since the beginning of the season or throughout the season, the Lakers are not consistent and they can't win on the road. They did not win a single game in this postseason on the road. They lost all three games on the road. The only game they won was at home. So when we think about that, guys, that tells you everything that I told you is true. They are not a consistent team. They're not a true contender because they can't win on the road. All right? That was number one. Right? And I told you that. LeBron James is never going to win another championship unless he takes a back seat, a back back seat. Like I'm talking about like the third option type back seat and lets other players take the lead Gets out of this little system nonsense. Stop dribbling the damn air out of the ball. Standing around on defense. Right? They're never going to... No team LeBron James plays on is ever going to win anything when this man is not playing any defense. I told you. What LeBron James should have done this season was play about 20, 25 minutes a game and give his max effort on both ends during those 20, 25 minutes. Right? You lower the minutes down so you can give more effort. Instead, LeBron James wants to play 30, 35 minutes a game, give zero effort on the defensive end, and then expect his teammates to cover up from all season long. It ain't going to work. You can't play four and five. It does not work, guys. But on the other side, he wants to chuck up 20, 21 shots. And once again, last night, he took the most shots of anybody on the team because he has to get his 30 points just to make it seem like, hey, LeBron James had 30. You know, he did his thing. Right, so they could point the finger at Anthony Davis and his, what, 17 points or whatever he scored. The men only took 11 shots, right? Why is that? Once again, the inconsistent play of LeBron James' teammates because of LeBron James and the, the system and the way that he plays the game of basketball. It does not ingratiate his teammates. It does not maximize them. It does not get the most out of these guys. It does not help them help him. It doesn't. But what really bothered me the most, guys, when I woke up this morning and I started to watch some of these videos, the highlights, things of that nature, is I watched the post-game press conference for LeBron James. And I don't know why I do this to myself. I, I don't know why. But I had to do it because I wanted to hear what this man had to say. Once again, you sit there and you hope LeBron James is going to say something good, something interesting, something worth note. But instead, he does exactly what we all know he's going to do. He makes more excuses. This man is full of excuses. That's all it's about for LeBron James. I'm completely disgusted with this guy. I told you guys, I'm so over this man. And I don't care if he retires or not. I really don't care if he plays five, six, seven, eight more years. I really don't care, right? The only thing that bothers me about it is that we have to continue to listen to this man speak because they keep putting the microphones in front of this guy and they keep putting his interviews up on ESPN and all these other platforms. Like this man saying something interesting or saying something good. All he does is expose himself. 
And last night was more the same. In the post-game press conference, once again, LeBron James dressed like a goofball clown. These guys have no swag. They have no class. Whatever happened to guys coming to the post-game press conference in suits, man? Whatever happened to this stuff? Guys looking like true professionals. Not a bunch of, you know, idiot TikTokers and social media influencers. That's what these guys look like when they go in the post-game press conference. You ever see these fools? They're a bunch of idiots. Bunch of fools. But anyway, he comes to the post-game press conference and he proceeds to say things like, what? Oh, we weren't whole this whole season. We weren't whole. He starts to make more excuses. You have to be kidding me, man. It never ends with this fool. He's talking about, oh, you know, the only time that we were really healthy and full was during the in-season tournament, and you saw how we did in that. He really wanted to bring that up. He had the nerve to bring up the in-season tournament during the post-game press conference after you eliminated four games to one in a real playoff scenario. You bring the in-season tournament up as an example to show that you guys were true competitors when you were, quote-unquote, healthy? What LeBron James won't mention the plus 500 free throws that they've had throughout the season. He won't mention that, though, as to the reason why they were able to win the in-season tournament. He won't mention all the lead, the lame teams that they were playing, the teams that they played that had injuries, the Memphis Grizzlies without John Morant. He won't talk about that, right? The New Orleans Pelicans with Zion Williamson in and out of the lineup all season. All teams have been dealing with injuries all teams have had guys in and out of the lineups. But LeBron James always wants you to know that his team had injuries. What injuries? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what injuries have the Lakers had this season. They haven't had any injuries. If you guys remember, LeBron James exposed himself because when he talks about this stuff, you remember, after the in-season tournament, what started to happen? The Lakers had to play a real schedule against a real NBA, and all of a sudden they started to lose games. And then what was the rumors going around? Oh, they got to trade D'Angelo Russell. They got to trade Austin Reeves. They got to trade Hachimura. They got to trade this guy. They got to trade Anthony Davis. They got to fire Darvin Ham. This was going on during the regular season, but LeBron James wants you to believe that the reason that they didn't win in the postseason is because they were, in, they were not healthy. More excuses for LeBron James. Bringing up the in-season tournament? Like, dude, man, once again, you have nerve, man. He lacks any self-awareness. I swear this man thinks that we're all stupid. I told you. He looks down on the commoners. He thinks he's smarter than everybody else. He really believes this. He thinks he's smarter than us. He thinks we're blind. We're not paying attention. He thinks that we don't really know the history of the game. Once again, I've told you guys, the true basketball fans, right, who respect the history of the game, right, who carry themselves with the integrity, that are genuine, right, they know that LeBron James... Ain't nowhere near some of these guys, man. They know that. And you guys don't respect LeBron James. How could you respect him? Listen to what he says. Talking about an in-season tournament and using that as an example to prove that you guys were, co were contenders early in the season when you were, quote-unquote, healthy. It don't add up. What injury has LeBron James had this season? What injury? No injury from LeBron James. Sore feet, sore ankles. That's not an injury. LeBron James load managed many games this season. Many games this season. The only games he missed was load managing. But he's going to talk about they were inconsistent because of health. What injury did Anthony Davis have this season? I'm trying to figure this out. What injury? Anthony Davis had no injuries. Austin Reeves was out there. D'Angelo Russell was out there. These guys were out there, man. What injuries are we talking about here? LeBron James needs his entire team 100% healthy. 100%. He needs to have three or four all-stars on his team. He needs to have all the free throw advantages. All the fouls must be in his team's favor. All of these things have to happen for the Lakers to be successful, for LeBron James to be satisfied. His teammates have to play the highest level. They have to average 25, 30 points a game, his teammates. They can't miss any shots. They got to play defense for him, cover up for him on the defensive end. These are all things LeBron James needs to be successful, but they, <laughs> they want to argue that he's somehow close to Michael Jordan? <clears throat> guys, LeBron James again has lost another playoff series with an all-star teammate. You guys know how many playoff series Michael Jordan lost with an all-star teammate? He lost one, guys. One playoff series when Michael Jordan was an all-star with an all-star teammate. One. And you know what series that was? 
1990 Eastern Conference Finals against the Detroit Pistons, the defending champions. However, the thing about that series, if we all remember, was what? Scottie Pippen played in Game 7 with a migraine and scored two points. Two points in that game. So, could we now point the finger at Scottie Pippen and say, hey, Michael Jordan the Bulls would have won that series if Scottie Pippen showed up and scored more than two points? Could we put the blame on Scottie Pippen? We all know that LeBron James and his fans would have put the blame on Scottie Pippen if that was LeBron James on the Chicago Bulls. They would have definitely blamed Scottie Pippen for scoring two points in a game seven. That's the only series Michael Jordan ever lost, guys, with an all-star teammate. Think about that. Never lost when he had an all-star teammate. Never lost when he had help. Never lost when he had home court advantage. LeBron James, though, once again has lost another playoff series with an all-star teammate. Right? He's lost many series, guys, with an all-star teammate. Many series. And he didn't have a, a Scottie Pippen migraine game teammate going on there. I don't remember Anthony Davis having a migraine in any of these games. Anthony Davis averaged damn near 30 points a game, right? Damn near 15 rebounds a game in this series. But they'll say LeBron had no help, right? They'll blame D'Angelo Russell or Austin Reeves. The role players get blamed playing with LeBron James. That's how great he is. Think about that. LeBron James is so great, they blame the role players when his teams fail. That's how great he is. Exposed. They never blame the role players when Michael Jordan didn't win or Bill Russell or Will Chamberlain or Jerry West or Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan. They don't blame the role players. No. They blame the star. Right? They didn't blame Byron Scott that the Lakers lost. The blame goes to Mag Magic Johnson or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Larry Bird? Did they blame Robert Parrish? Did they blame all these other guys? Danny Ainge? No. Larry Bird was a leader. These guys always took the responsibility. Wasn't no one blaming these other guys? Only for LeBron James do they put all the blame at the role player's feet all the time, or the coach, or both. But they want to argue LeBron James is the greatest of all time. It don't add up, guys. It don't add up. You're not holding him to that standard. And this man continues to embarrass himself in these post-game press conferences, making excuses, injury excuses. You guys weren't 100% healthy? What? What are we talking about here? Anthony Davis played what? 75 games a season? Whatever amount of games, played more games than LeBron James. Him and LeBron James played 70 plus games a season, guys. Where's the injuries excuses? I don't understand this. It don't add up. The man is just, anytime he can make an excuse, Anytime he can deflect off of himself, he does it. And this is why we'll never respect LeBron James. Because he'll never own up. He'll never take it on the chin. He'll never take it like a man. And this is why I tell you, anyone that supports LeBron James is a kid, a child. That's the mentality of a kid. Only a child always looks to point the finger at somebody else. It's always someone else's fault. A grown man understands and takes responsibility for their actions, for the outcomes. They take responsibility. They own it. They own it. LeBron James never owns his losses. He never does. He pouts and moans, walks through the tunnel, tears his jersey off. He points his fingers at his teammates. He comes to a post-game press conference and reads off his stat line. Never defends his teammates. Never gives them their just dues. He talks about how much that made him the GOAT, how great he is. He's averaging a triple-double. He's the greatest player in the world. Me, 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 I, I, I. I told you that. It's all you hear when LeBron James speaks. It's all you hear. And last night, he continued more the same. Right? Put the blame on injuries. The Lakers weren't healthy. All teams are dealing with it. Jamal Murray wasn't even 100% last night. But he went out there and he balled out. Right? Dunked right in LeBron James' face with a sore calf. Hit two game winners in that series. How many game wins did LeBron James hit in last season's playoff series when he got swept four games and nothing? He missed a bunch of game winners. How many game wins did he hit this season? He had a chance. He was wide open at the three-point line with about 15 seconds to go, and he bricked it up. And then Jamal Murray hit the game winner. Exposed. It has nothing to do with your age. Right? Raising your level of play, making a shot when it matters most, being clutch, ain't got nothing to do with your age. LeBron James raising up for that three-point shot at the end of that game had nothing to do with him being 39. Because remember, they tried to tell us during the season, that article, remember, 
that LeBron James has become one of the best shooters in the NBA at age 39. Where was that shooting when he needed it most? It's not there. Because LeBron James is not clutch. LeBron James is not that dude. In the regular season, it's fine. In the postseason, when it matters most, his palms get sweaty. He gets all nervous, right? He starts blowing on his hands. He don't got the confidence. And he throws up a brick. These are the facts, guys. Once again, I've never hated on LeBron James on this channel. These are the cold, hard facts. LeBron James is a clown. He's a fool. And he, once again, he comes to a post-game press conference after he gets embarrassed four games to one. And he starts to talk about, oh, we weren't healthy but, but since the early part of the season when we won the in-season tournament. He really brought the in-season tournament up as a, a crutch, as, as to show that they were a good team in the beginning of the season, early in the season. They were a good team. Meanwhile, Darvin Ham was on the hot seat. Everyone was going to get traded. Remember that? Everyone was going to get traded. And then when they didn't make any trades, LeBron James was upset. Remember he sat out the next game? Remember that, guys? This LeBron James, but he wants to make more excuses. I'm so done with this guy, man. But like I said, he continues to give us more ammunition to roast him. He continues to embarrass himself with these comments, never taking ownership of anything. Oh, yeah, you know, we weren't healthy. Uh, you know, but when we were healthy, you saw what we could do in the in-season tournament. You look real stupid right now, LeBron James, because you celebrate that in-season tournament like a clown. You know, it's funny, too, in that post-game press conference. I don't know if you guys rem or, or, or heard it, but he said something about someone asked him a question about what they could take away from this series. Because if you think about it, they had the lead in essentially all those games and they still lost. So the reporter asked, can you guys take away any positives from this series because you were competitive with the defending champions? And LeBron James proceeds to talk about, no, I don't take anything away from this. You know, he talks about how, you know, he wasn't celebrating, you know, a loss or celebrating, uh, what did he say, man? He said something about celebrating like, you know, uh, like a woulda, coulda. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, he talked about, oh, we, we lost. But then at the same breath, right, he talks about the incident tournament. So it don't add up because you're saying that you're not celebrating those kinds of things, a moral victory or some of these other things. You don't celebrate that kind of stuff. But you guys celebrated the in-season tournament like it was an NBA championship. It don't add up. Once again, LeBron James saying things that does not match up to what we saw in the video footage, what we watch. It don't add up. You're celebrating the in-season tournament. You're drinking champagne out of the cup. You got goggles on. You guys are spraying champagne everywhere for an in-season tournament. But then you want to come to the post-game press conference after you guys lost in a real playoff scenario and talk about, oh, there's no more victories here. You know, we lost. I don't celebrate these kinds of things. What? Dude, you celebrate everything. You slam dunk on a little guy and you start flexing and celebrating like that. There's something to be, be, be like, come on, man. Everything with LeBron James is a spectacle. He don't get a foul call, he throw a temper tantrum. Meanwhile, the Lakers shot more free throws by a mile than anybody else. Does anybody know how many free throws they shot last night? The NBA tried, guys. The NBA officials, they tried. It did not hold up, though. They shot 27 free throws, guys. The Nuggets, nine. Nine. Nine free throws to 27. And they still lost. This is LeBron James. This way he gets exposed because he won't talk about that in the postgame press conference, will he? No, but he'll cry during the regular season that the Lakers didn't replay something or that they didn't get a foul call. It's a joke, man. And these fans respect him. These LeBron James fans, I told you, they expose themselves. All these fools out there that support LeBron James and his antics, the things that he says, the way he carries himself. They support this stuff because they stand for nothing. They stand on nothing. No class, no honor, no integrity, no love of the game, no respect for the fans. None of this stuff. So LeBron James can lollygag all season long, play no defense, blame his teammates. The fans will blame his teammates. The media will blame his teammates. They'll blame the coaching staff. And then he'll come to a post-game press conference after they were eliminated and take no ownership. No onus. No. Nope. Not like, yeah, man, you know, we didn't get it done, man. I didn't play that great. I didn't, I didn't get the most out of my guys. 
You know, we just didn't get it done, man. The Nuggets are on another level. We just, we're not on that level right now. None of this stuff. None of this stuff. He's talking about, hey, yo, uh, we, we haven't been healthy. You know, we weren't healthy. Uh, when we were healthy in the beginning of the season, you know, we won the NCAA tournament. You know, so we weren't healthy. And, uh, you know, we don't celebrate these kinds of things. We, we only celebrate. Like, dude, you celebrate the NCAA tournament. You guys hung a banner up. They gave you an in-season tournament MVP trophy. And you guys were, once again, no humility from LeBron James. No humility, man. The dude's not humble at all. And you would think with all the failures of his career that he would have humility. He would have been humbled. But he's not humbled. You know why, guys? Because he never has to take the blame. How can you get humbled or be humbled when you never take the responsibility or the blame? None of it. So... A win is a win. A loss is a loss. I told you, LeBron James is in a win-win scenario. When the Lakers win, his team wins, it's all LeBron James. You see the headlines? LeBron James leads Lakers. LeBron James this. LeBron James that. When the Lakers lose or his team loses, it's D'Angelo Russell. It's Anthony Davis this. It's Hachimura that. Oh, it's Darvin Ham made the, the mistake here. It's always something else. They won't even mention LeBron James. They won't mention him. They might mention his stats real quick. But that's about it. They'll never mention him walking off the court early. right? They won't talk to him, uh, talk about how he's never engaged on the bench in the huddles. Darvin Ham's trying to draw up a play, talk to the guys, get them on the same page. Here's LeBron James off to the side, looking down, soaking, all upset. Terrible body language from LeBron James. I know I've rambled on really long here, guys. I'm sorry. Man. I'm going to do another video, man, because we must continue to do this stuff, man. This guy's an embarrassment. Go back and listen to the post-game press conference. Listen to what this man had to say. This guy's a joke, man. I do not respect LeBron. I'll never respect him. He'll never be top 10. Never. Never, guys. Never. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.